What is up everybody? Welcome back to Crawl TV. On this episode, we're gonna be doing more work on the pan of the bug, raising it, cutting the tunnel out, and making a GM motor fit on a Jeep chassis and a Volkswagen body. More cutting as usual. Uh, it's gonna be a long, long day of that, but we also have some new parts that we get to fit into the bug and see how it's all gonna fit together. So I'm excited to take you guys along for the ride. Let's get started. All right, so this is where we're at right now. Um, the floor of the bug is currently bolted to the bug the same way it would be if it was stock. There are um, actual Volkswagen specific bolts right now going through that pan and up to the body. But if you come around the side and look at this with me, the floor actually sits a little bit lower than the body. And you'll see a lot of like the guys that race class 11 and stuff, that is just like a mangled piece of sheet metal right there because it hangs lower. In our case, since we're putting the bug onto a Jeep frame, we want to get rid of this underhang here because we want to use the heater channels of the original body as our like main body and structural support for the body mounts. So my plan today is to get in here and cut right on the inside of this lip and shave down that outer edge of the floor pans. And then I'm going to come in here to this tunnel and I'm going to remove pretty much the whole cap on the tunnel. So there will just be the floor part of the tunnel. Uh, and then I'm gonna cut around the back. And so this is really, really just getting whittled down to like a single piece of metal pan. There's not a lot of structure left in it. That is the plan for now. There's a lot more going on in the shop today, but we'll start with that. And then if we have time, I'll show you the goodies that are on that table. New parts came in for the bug and I am stoked about it. So I will show you guys those as soon as this is done. All right guys, so with the pan taken off of the bug, now we have even more to cut off of this thing. We wanna be able to raise the floor level about four inches and mount this floor on top of the heater channels. So what I'm gonna do is basically mark a cut line all the way around this thing. We're gonna get rid of this outside lip here. We'll get rid of this riser. Uh, the most important thing to keep is our VIN number, which is right here on the tunnel, but the whole tunnel is gonna be coming off. Now, if I had known about this ahead of time, I wouldn't have welded the floor pans onto this so securely and seam sealed it already. But these things are so uh, like freshly welded on that there's no way that they're gonna come off cleanly. So uh, because of that, we can't just put the pans on a flat piece of metal. We actually have to salvage what's left of the Volkswagen pan itself. So we're gonna cut all of this off, put it back on that frame, see how it looks, and then we'll use the bottom of those heater channels for our body mounts. So without further ado, let's get to cutting. Okay, so, ah, here's where we're at. I cut the full tunnel off the pans. I need to save my VIN number, which is very important to preserve this piece, but all of this is gone. Now this provided a ton of structure to these pans, so what's left is super weak and flimsy. Um, I'm gonna have to run some kind of support beneath them to make this strong again. But uh, right now what I'm about to do is raise it up into the body and get it set up. I just cut these pieces here off of the body itself. So now this is all flush and I should be able to slide the pans in right up to this and then mark my cut lines on this so that they match up and then I can weld them together. My plan is to have the pan sitting directly on top of this heater channel here. So if I did any of my measurements right, it should sit correctly. 
but now's the part where we find out if I've cut it correctly or if I've cut way too much. The pan is in. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, it actually lines up perfectly on top of these heater channels. So now we can clean everything up and actually weld this in place. And in the back, it saves us from a, a bunch of like plate metal that we were gonna have to put in there to fill those gaps. Now, like I mentioned, this is super unsturdy now. Like it's, because that tunnel is gone, this has no uh, structure to it. So we're gonna have to run something beneath the floor to strengthen it up. But we have gained a ton of clearance on the bottom. Now our body mounts will mount to this and this floor will kind of float above this. I friggin' love it when a plan comes together. This day is turning out to be very productive and that makes me super happy. <laughs> While I'm thinking about it, I just came outside to the side of the shop and grabbed this front clip from the bug. This is also a piece where we have to save the VIN and that's the VIN tag right there. I just cut that VIN number off the tunnel, but um, before all this stuff goes to scrap, that's a really, really important piece for me to save. So I'm gonna bring it back into the shop here I'm gonna drill those rivets out and I'm gonna remove that VIN tag. And um, that way I will have three VIN tags for the car. So originally the car had a tag in the windshield and that was right in front of the driver. And that was this tag right here. This is like a little stamped aluminum tag with the VIN number. I made sure to save that one before the car went to sandblasting. And this one here, our VIN number, I just cut off the tunnel. And then this one here actually says Volkswagen made in Germany. And, um, and then everything else is in German, <laughs> but it does say type 11 on it. So, uh, and it has the VIN number stamped in it twice. So yeah, I'm gonna keep this one as well. And then I'll throw the rest of the sheet metal in that scrap metal pile um, because that's the only piece that I need to save off of that. I've got the floor in the body now. Uh, I'll clean everything up so that it's ready to weld in and make my final cuts. Nick's gonna come back here in a second. We're gonna get to doing the finish welds on our frame. And then I think it's time for us to show you guys some of the new parts that showed up and kind of where our heads are at as far as making everything fit together to do, like I said, to put a GM motor and a Jeep chassis with a Volkswagen body. So nothing standard, um, but we're, <laughs> we're making it work. And today's just one of those days where things are kind of sort of working the way they should. So I'm really happy about it. All right, guys, so here's the final fitment. I took this back out again. I cleaned up all the edges on it uh, so that it can be welded in and clamped down. It's completely flush all the way along the edges. I did have to notch out right here around the B pillar a little bit. And um, like I mentioned earlier, I cut those flanges off the back where the old floor pans bolted up to it. Now it sits kind of over those. Since this is on top of the heater channels, like I mentioned earlier, you can really see that mating surface that we have here for the body mounts. So we have like a really solid structure for the body to mount on a body mount. That's where we're at for now. I think I'm gonna take like a 15 minute breather, but Nick is gonna come out here and he is gonna weld the rest of the frame. And um, once that's done, we'll take a look at our parts that are sitting on this table over here. I'm excited to show you guys what we have in store for this thing. No, I did not just change shirts. I actually went home Friday. Um, I had to leave the shop early for something. So I just came back up here. It's now Wednesday, uh, but I have a special guest now for the second half of this video. My dad is here. And uh, I got him set up welding the floor pans in. And um, even I can't screw that up. <laughs> well, he got the tacks done and then we, we ground them smooth. I ran some beads on the floor. So that thing is in now. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, the floor is completely welded into the bug. So what I did is I actually took a uh, like Irwin vice clamp, like a wood clamp, and I pulled the floor out. So made it tight as it could possibly be in the center to give this some rigidity, which it actually stiffened up a lot. But by pulling it tight, it gave me about an inch overlap on either side so that I have a nice um, kind of support system beneath this floor. My dad came through and put a tack every one inch. And then once all the tacks were in, I came back through 
and followed that up with every, like every four inches, I did like a three inch pass. I'm super amazed still with how well this floor uh, fit into this bug by setting it inside of it rather than bolting it to the bottom. It makes such a big difference and this looks so much better. And now since, since this is a true body on frame vehicle, having the floors welded in kind of completes the body of this bug. Obviously there's a firewall missing here. We'll build that out and fill it in when the time comes. We still have to figure out where the engine's gonna go up front, but it's looking super, super good. So now our next step I think is um, we're gonna do the finish welds on the frame. And once we get the frame welds done, I think my dad and I are probably gonna go to lunch and, and get out of here, but it's been a really fun morning getting up here and working on the bug with him. And um, I have a couple things I'm gonna show you really quick that I kept alluding to when I was here on Friday. So uh, let's go over to the table and I'll show you guys what new parts showed up for this bug because there are some cool things here. So it turns out this hole that we have where the luggage tray was might not need to be patched with that panel that Steph bought. Um, even though there's a big rectangle cut out of this, if I can clean this up, if I can clean this up enough, it will be the perfect spot to squeeze a fuel cell into. And now that we have a fuel cell, we know our dimensions, I can um, do the math on that. But here <laughs> is the new 19 gallon aluminum fuel cell from Motobuilt. So we have brackets to mount this fuel cell. Uh, we have all of the, the fill nozzle, um, send return, all the parts that we need for this. There are no baffles in it or no foam in it. We're, we'll figure that out. We might be able to run it just like this. But this is a 19 gallon cell. The dimensions fit almost perfectly to fit in the back of the car where that luggage tray is. Now, in addition to the Motobuilt fuel cell, which I am super jazzed about, we also have um, all of our Dakota Digital um, parts here. So we have a digital dash display. We have our full engine harness. This is actually our body harness. So this will be our, our lights, uh, tail lights, turn signals, um, steering column, our flasher built in there. This is the fuse, fuse block for it. Everything is here for our body, which is freaking amazing. But the Dakota digital stuff is even more incredible. This is a fully tuned ECM for the L86 motor. And then in here we have, this is actually for the body, body harness as well. This is gonna be what controls the turn signals. So left and right signal, controls the lights, horn. That's a pretty nice, uh, all in one piece that we're gonna use for the body harness. Now the engine harness, everything is built in. Believe it or not, this tiny little cube here is our entire tipum. Everything is extremely set up for this exact application. So um, when it comes to wiring in the body, wiring in the motor between the body harness, the engine harness, and an S-Pod, we will have everything set up so that we don't have to do any guesswork or any super custom wiring to get this car to come together. And when most people build cars, I think that this is probably the most daunting part is how am I gonna wire an entire vehicle um, from scratch? But if you purchase these harnesses, it essentially becomes a plug and play process to get everything set up in your vehicle to make sure that your engine starts first turn of the key. Um, you know, it, it has the tune in it. So I think the next step for us right now is to get the fish plates welded, do the finish welds on those so that the frame will be done. The floor pans are as done as they're gonna be on this thing. And um, that pretty much leaves the rest of like the touch up welding to these pieces like this. Obviously I need to come back through and finish some of these patches that I started. Let's get started on welding this frame. And then um, I think that will wrap up what we're doing for the progress on this video. Well, I think this is where we're leaving off for the day. Um, if you've ever been covered in like the material that you throw on yourself when you're grinding and using flap discs and stuff, um, after you sweat a bunch with this stuff on your skin, it starts to feel really uncomfortable. So I'm feeling pretty close to done for the day. We went ahead and threw a couple things in here just to mock up and, and play make pretend a little bit and see what the car is gonna look like when it's actually built. Um, namely, the biggest thing that we put in the way is these 43 inch tires, once again. So far, I'm really liking the way things are coming together. We're gonna have um, some clearance issues more than likely with the motor. 
In the back window, we're thinking that we're gonna be putting a radiator, transmission cooler, and the um, oil cooler for the steering. So there'll be a lot of stuff going on back here. Multiple fans sucking air through those radiators to keep everything cool while this thing's moving really slowly down the road. The cab is gonna be extremely, extremely tight, but that is generally how the seats are gonna fit in this car. They'll be slid that far back. Um, that's just the reality of it. That's how far back those have to go. So if this was a normal bug, we'd be sitting in the back seat to drive it. But that pretty much wraps it up. So um, we will catch you guys on the next episode where we come back to the shop and get that fuel cell fit it in here and start working on building body mounts to mount this cab on top of this frame and get everything properly suspended. Like I mentioned before, the reason that we're putting body mounts on this and not attaching it directly to the frame is so that if we twist the frame a little bit, uh, we just have a little bit of give before it starts twisting the body. Uh, I wanna make sure those doors continue to open and close the way that they're supposed to. And that, that's generally my game plan. If I come up with something else for the next time I'm up here in the shop, I will certainly let you guys know but that does it for today. I am done. So thanks again for watching. Please stay tuned. This car is only getting more exciting as the build goes on. Uh, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to Crawl TV on YouTube. Check me out on other social media channels uh, like Instagram or Facebook if you'd like to. And uh, I will see you guys on the next episode. So peace out.